Hello, welcome to the training on IV uh, treatment uh, therapies for Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, this is a free training. Um, my name is Dr. Kasia Kynes. I'm CEO and founder of EBV Global Institute. It is my pleasure to share my clinical experience, some science behind what's available, expectations, safety issues, and um, what these therapies can and cannot deliver. So let's get started. We're also going to talk about, by the way, alternatives to IV therapies, because not everyone likes needles. That would be me. And so there are ways to bypass it and still get that very uh, effective delivery um, by almost bypassing the, the gut. So let's start with uh, Epstein-Barr virus and... Well, let's start with the IV therapy in general first, because it's such a beneficial kind of boost to your nutritional status. So in general, it's fantastic for rehydration, electrolytes, if you've lost the vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, bypassing absorption issues, gut issues, problems with low stomach acid, hypochlorhydria, or, or not lacking stomach acid, which is life-threatening, achlorhydria. Uh, some doctors have B12 shots, even my chiropractor has these services, so it's pretty uh, common and available. And so in general, it's a fantastic way to boost your nutritional status. It's really nice and nurturing and easy and you don't have to do anything. Um, so once in a while, it's a great way to go, especially if you're under a lot of stress, you're going to feel run down. Why is this relevant to EBV? Um, let me just check if I'm recording. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, it's because I want you to look at this virus as an opportunist. It likes to exploit your uh, vulnerabilities, your weak no links, so to speak. So, when people have chronic EBV, they often can pinpoint difficult time in their lives, something happening, a lot of stress happening, and then they dip and then they have this big blow up of EBV and chronic fatigue and, and brain fog and they are disabled pretty much, right? So I want you to recognize that part of this journey um, in people with EBV is chronic stress as one of the triggers in Part of the reason is that when you have stress, acute stress, chronic stress, you actually are losing a lot of nutrients. And from the studies that I looked at, we know, I noticed also in my clinical practice, um, is that when your nutritional status starts dropping, your virus becomes more virulent, uh, that's the medical term, means more aggressive. And we have studies on selenium, on vitamin E, you know, there's not enough studies on all the nutrients, but I can easily imagine be, that that's true for other nutrients too, just because stress causes depletions of the nutrients you have through urine, for example, but also stress causes poorer choices of food, self-soothing, you know, <laughs> sugar, snacks. And we know also from research that junk food increases NF-kappa B, and the more nf kappa you have, the more EBV can use it to replicate because that's what it uses to replicate itself. So as you can see, it's kind of tough when you uh, have uh, struggles in your life and you're very stressed and, you know, by default, almost self-care goes down, you don't eat well, and that also, you know, increases the chances of the virus to really do damage. So on top of that, some people with EBV become sticky for infections. You're already vulnerable. So maybe your H. pylori starts acting. Maybe you have SIBO infection. Maybe you, know, you have fungal infection. You have mold exposure. And then fungal infection is kind of a side effect of that. Uh, we see that a lot in our community. And so the absorption becomes an issue in the gastrointestinal tract. Sometimes it's, there's permeability. So it's harder for you to get those nutrients in so you can be compromised nutritionally as well. So yes, so there's plenty of reasons to get just general 
boost to your nutrient status through IV therapy of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and electrolytes, period. All right. So now let's talk about uh, IV therapies that are particularly studies and well studies and deliver well for this virus. <laughs> so we're not talking about just getting the nutrients that you may be lacking. We're talking about actually turning down the virus. And so I have an, an individual freestanding um, uh, video training on just vitamin C. So I discussed the IV therapy and studies and all, all that in more detail in that video. I'm going to provide the link below this video. But for today, I just want to focus on the fact that um, vitamin C... Uh, IV therapy, while it's very well studied and it delivers for most people, you want to be cognizant of a couple of things. First of all, if you really want to get rid of your infection, your chronic condition, there's not one individual tool that you can use that will take care of the virus for you. The reason being that the virus, like I keep saying, is an opportunist, so it's going to exploit your vulnerabilities, whether it's emotional, physical, physiological, uh, spiritual. So it's more about your life and really looking at it and seeing what is not working. Why is Why are you so vulnerable? Are you in a toxic relationship? I mean, I had a case when there was such a toxic marriage and and... Um, our student in our community was struggling, you know, kids and husband, but nothing was working. The therapies were not working, but the moment she made the courageous decision to just remove herself, leave, cut it off, finish that relationship, uh, it was amazing how the body came to life. She was able to absorb again. And so everything was, was easier. So... I'm saying this story just to impress upon you that there's something in your life that happened or continues to happen. And IV therapy with vitamin C, which will patch a hole and provide solution temporarily. But it's not really a solution. It's short-lived and it doesn't address what you still need to address in your life in order to heal completely. So... I always say in our community, we're building a house out of brick, not plaster, uh, like we build in Poland. I'm from Poland originally. And so it's solid. You have foundations that are solid. And so I would say, you know, vitamin C, uh, IV therapy is like maybe building the walls of the house, but you still need the roof. You still need the concrete, you know, foundation. You still need the components. And these are the components of your health, of your nutrition, of your, you know, how you handle stress, how, you know, are, are you in a toxic work environment, toxic relationship? What is happening? Do you have a lot of stress and, and don't know how to cope with it? So, Vitamin C is short-lived, so people complain that they will get it, and after a few days, it weans itself off, and then you're kind of back to where you were almost. And so uh, I think vitamin C is great for, like, to really turn off other minor infections, but if you have chronic EBV, you would have to rely on that vitamin C again and again and again. Um, and... So you have to look at that virus from different angles and really provide different tools, not just one. There's also one danger of vitamin C IV, and this is something that the doctor that provides that IV should test, and they do. Um, it's an enzymes, it's a blood test that uh, that should be run. G6PD, G as in uh, George, 6 is the number, P as in Paul, and D as in David. It's glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Some people have deficiency of this of this enzyme, and if you do, then uh, vitamin C IV therapy is very dangerous. Um, you can uh, literally hemolyze, break your blood cells, and become super anemic. And so the highest risk um, 
uh, communities will be people with darker skin, African Americans, patients of Mediterranean origin. So that complicates things. And so you should never do that therapy if you've never done it and if that hasn't been tested. Uh, now, I told you what happens if you want a boost in nutrition, you want it to get in, you have pill fatigue, you've been popping those supplements and you don't feel any difference, you don't know if they're working or not, IV maybe is not available to you, you don't have a doctor in your in your area or you can't drive or it's just not it's just not available or you hate needles and you don't want to keep going. So there is an alternative and there is a company that has been on the market for, I think, almost 30 years. I've been using this. Um, there is a, a complete line that they created of isotonic delivery. I've been using this in my clinical practice since 2009. I was so impressed. Uh, I've been using it personally because it really works. So if when I had my physical clinic years ago, I would literally provide a sample uh, for for a patient during my consult at the beginning of the consult of, let's say, uh, a double B complex from that line. And then I would check within 15 minutes and inevitably uh, the patients would perk up. It's like, my brain is on. I'm, I'm like, I'm energized. I'm focused. What is in the solution? So basically, um, and I will also provide a link below to the portal that we use with this company. Um, the portal is kindswellnesssolutions.com. Um, and so they have vitamins, they have my minerals, they have antioxidants that can specifically help with EBV. And isotonicity basically mimics your bodily fluids. Um, so saliva, sweat, tears, blood, they have osmotic pressure. Uh, that is isotonic, very particular. And so when you provide a solution that mimics that and put the supplements in it, then the body is fooled into thinking that it's itself. So there's nothing to break down and digest. It's pre-digested. It's ready to go. So IV is instant. It's in your veins. Uh, and isotonic solution, it is something you drink. You mix powder with very specific amount of, uh, of water. So you recreate that osmotic pressure, and when you drink it, the body recognizes it as self. So within about 15 minutes, uh, the solution is ready for absorption, and the absorption is really uh, felt. So a lot of people really feel like, oh my gosh, it's the only vitamin D that perks me up, or it's the only vitamin D that, that improves my numbers in the lab. Uh, so it... It also bypasses the stomach. It just comes through. You know, there's nothing for the stomach to do because the stomach assumes it's its own, you know, bodily fluids. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so this is a this is something that is a, a nice alternative because it's independent. Uh, you, you have it at home. You know, it's just a supplement. So it's just much more practical. It tastes good. And you can combine these into cocktails. I have my little cocktails in the morning. I mix different things and I drink it and then wait 15 minutes and they're in. So um, the in our community and over the years in my patient community, this is one of the most favorite delivery deliveries for supplement in people that are very compromised and have a lot of gut problems. Uh, the last thing I want to mention briefly is iron infusions. Uh, there is a small percentage of population in our EBV community that have very low iron. So um, I would say really that is a little bit of a danger zone. So if there is an accident, if there is an excessive blood loss, you know, if it's going to save a life, absolutely. But it can be toxic. It can be extremely toxic. You can get an anaphylactic shock. It's very toxic to the brain. It can induce fungal infection and colonization in the gastrointestinal tract. So uh, it can be so inflammatory to the brain, it can throw people through the loop. So tread lightly, be careful, talk to your doctor, and really assess if <clears throat> this is something <clears throat> that should be should be used. So 
So if your ferritin is low, if you are, you know, if you have low energy, the ferritin is the most important marker to show if you are deficient, in my opinion. It's critical to discuss with the doctor why you have low uh, storage of iron. The body is very, very meticulous in terms of how much or how little it absorbs from food because iron is so important but so dangerous if you overdo it. But the body doesn't have such a good capacity to to uh, uh, you know control that dose when you take supplements. And you have to recognize that there is a reason why you don't create enough store storage of your iron. It could be celiac, it could be low stomach acid, it could be pernicious anemia, it could be thyroid conditions, it could be other infections, bacterial infections. So it's very important to work with, uh, I would say clinical nutritionists with a lot of experience are excellent because they can work through foods, they can work, work through safety uh, areas of how to supplement iron or how to increase iron absorption or how to increase iron in diet without uh, endangering you um, and creating a toxic uh, uh, iron environment. So, yeah, so I would say, um, and your ferritin, like from our perspective and, uh, and experience, your ferritin level should be 70 and above. If it's below, then it's already too low, even though the range is much, much, uh, you know, much wider. That's what I would say. When it drops below 70, many women will experience hair loss, for example, already. So, so yeah, so iron infusion for our community can be life, uh, life-saving if there is a reason, but with chronic issues, I really urge you to think twice, discuss it with your provider, look at the why of your low iron, see if you can address that and dig a little deeper, go, go for the root cause. So we've discussed um, the benefits of uh, the IV therapies for nutrients. We've discussed alternative to needles. <laughs> We've discussed the vitamin C infusions, um, of, of IV therapies, and I gave you some tips from my clinical experience about iron. I hope you found it helpful and uh, keep it safe. And I will see you on the next training.